structuring the sermon is always a challenge for for preachers because I think we tend to have two, three, four forms that we fall back on. I think there's even been studies that have shown this, but who knows? You know, it's always fun to quote studies without actually having read them. But people who have read these things tell me this, right? That most preachers have two, three, four forms of a sermon. So I know what mine are, right? It's either start with an amusing story that has something to do with the text, but leaves people wondering why is he telling this? And then you go back to the text and walk through the passage and then bring the story back at the end, right? Or I like to walk through text in a particular way. Or I sometimes will find a particular word or a theme and create a refrain that shows up in the sermon at different times that works this refrain and this theme. You know, everybody has their own. So I think, you know, to give advice on formatting or structuring a sermon, one is know what you do best and know what your forms are. Two is to vary the forms. If you find that you're always beginning, for example, by giving a story, just change that. Start with the text, right? After the scripture reading, jump right into an aspect of the biblical passage that you're treating. If you always do narrative stuff and storytelling, try doing something a little more didactic, you know, a little more teaching oriented, vice versa, but vary it because that will get people's attention and it will also keep you fresh in some ways as, as a preacher. So know what you're good at. Uh, try new things every now and then. Don't also try to be somebody that you're not, right? If you just need a manuscript, you know, stick with that. Don't, you don't need to go off manuscript just to prove that you can do it or just to be different. If you like narrative and like spinning stories, that's great and do that. If you're not good at that, if you're not a storyteller, then stick to something else. The other thing too, and this is maybe the third bit of advice about structuring is, I think you can never go wrong if you structure a sermon in a way that models or reflects the biblical text or text that you're working in the sermon. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're working uh, a narrative that has some kind of big climactic moment, right? Whether that's a parable that leaves people in suspense until something happens or a character, you don't know how that character is going to respond. Let your sermon do that too to build to a similar climax. If you're working a lament passage from a prophet or from a psalm, let your sermon take the form of a lament, right? That same movement from despair, crying out, naming the problem to eventually moving toward a position of trust or of relinquishing the problem over to God. Let people see, you can do this, you can explain it as you go, but you don't even always have to. People will see ways in which the sermon matches the text, which both, I think, empowers the sermon. It makes the, gives her more coherence to the worship service, but it also shows people how the text works, right? How it works to be brought through mystery to revelation or from, again, lament to trust from promise to fulfillment. They see it enacted in the sermon, and that's going to make the sermon more powerful and the biblical text more, more vibrant.